here. If they think that this is the most powerful pick in the current series, Aatrox is up, Silas is up, Graves, there's a lot of powerful champions that they could lean towards, but the first pick, Varus from T1, was so strong because of the Renata, I feel. I feel like with a different support, it could be a little bit weaker, so we'll see what DRX approaches. Yeah, it, it's interesting because DRX, like you were talking about earlier, Depth has not been playing the Avelios, so it puts them kind of at a minus one in these AD carry pools necessitating there it is. bans over and over and over. And so they're pushed into this scenario where taking it away from Guma. And Guma Yushi does play the Aphelios, of course, like I said. So they can lock in an Aphelios lane here. They can lock in something like a Kalista lane if they're confident. Sivir could work very well into Varus, something that uh, DRX was running. Diego is up if owner wants to lean into that. I think T1 have so many options. The question is, do they do what DRX did and take away this Aatrox? And therefore, does King have a response to that Aatrox? Oh no, my friends, we're getting a different flavor. Remember, this champion was banned on blue side by T1 in game one. Now it is locked in next to that Aatrox by T1 on red side in game two. T1 just have so much leverage. They've already defeated the Aatrox at your hands, and now Zeus with it gets to pose the same question. Are they thinking about Heimerdinger, I wonder, here on three, just running the Ash Heimerdinger into DRX. They played it before, carry as Heimerdinger, but they're gonna pick up the Aatrox. So, does King have a response? I think King in's response to Aatrox is probably something like Fiora. Uh, one of those carry top laners that you can match it with. We see yeah. this Camille as well to great success, uh, but it wins after one item. Piosic, does he go for the Kindred? Yeah, you hover the Graves, I hover the Kindred. This is Piosic's answer. The Kindred streamer wanting to get a world skin for his favorite champion but won't have to lock it in unless you pull the trigger on the Graves. There's the hover from Yone, just teasing. There's the Camille Fiora. I think that's the direction the King and Will go in. There's the Heimdinger as well for Barrel once again. I think they were scared of giving that over to Carrier on three and not having an answer in terms of having a pushing lane. I also love Camille against a champion like Ash. You go for her, you hit her, easy kill every time. So now the answers for Heimerdinger lanes have been greatly discussed. I'm very interested how deep Carrier goes. He's one of the supports with the deepest champions pool. Could go Soraka, could go Zyra. Lots of things pushed around. You also go Ash support as well. We've seen it from players like Mako. If they want to just flex this to support and pick up an AD carry here, no, they're going to go Ash Lux into Heimerdinger Varus. Maybe they think they can get a little bit of push. They have a lot of follow up and a lot of CC. Yes, yeah, super long range. So you can try and fish around for those bindings and get really good poke. Uh, obviously, the volley here for Ash helping so much with that push. Plus, Heimerdinger is normally good at blocking certain skill shots with the turret. Lux Binding will hit the target directly behind, so it can go through that little bit of a shield he likes to deploy. Very true. The E and the W from Lux and Ash, respectively, will be able to burn through those turrets as well. Now we're going into the 4 5. We've got top and bottom. Both side lanes picked from either side. It's mid jungle where the focus now comes towards. We've seen picks like Lee Sin. Graves is still up, Diego is still up, Silas is still up, and the Azir from Faker as well. Yeah, you have to think, with, this, with the uh, Rise already being banned out, Silas' priority again rises up in this one. Azir answer is still possible, but with a Kindred ban, that also raises the Graves yep. possibility again. If you've got no answer there for the P.O. shit Kindred, this is going to be such a tough jungle champ to deal with. And T1 have a lot of damage right now. They have Graves jungle, they have a pushing bot double range. They could play a supportive mid laner in this comp. Something like Galio or Lissandra would be amazing for T1's comp. We'll see what DRX rounded out with in the mid jungle. Yeah, I think you want more aggression because the best pairings with Graves are when you also have Ash lanes with the Hawkshot to be able to find your opponent and get those Graves invades off. So T1 really setting owner up to be the star this time around. We might just get the same mid jungle from last game. Diego Silas coming out here from DRX. They're confident enough to not ban the Graves, take away the Azir instead, and then match the Viego into the Graves and run back. Something like the Silas, as we expect. That yeah. takes away the, the Lissandra, okay. that takes away the Galio. I think Galio and Lissandra are very difficult to pull off against Silas, so we might see more of a control mage here from Faker, unless he wants to lean to things like the, uh, the Ari. Exactly what I was thinking, the Ari, which Zekka himself used. Let's see about it. Last pick of the draft on red side for Faker. They know exactly what he's up against. They know exactly what else they've got. And what will they choose? It's Victor for Faker. Control Mage makes a lot of sense. You've got four range champions on your team here, T1. So much poke, so much lockdown, so much damage. DRX have a, have a comp that has to commit into it, so T1 wants to kite them back. Yeah, there are so many options when you have Graves right now. Premier Invade Jungler, Farming Jungler, with an Ash Hawkshot to support you in information, and a Victor into Silas, range versus melee matchup in mid lane also to support you in your efforts. T1, they've trusted so much in their youth programs. 
with Zeus, Owner, Guma, all coming from them. And Faker now going to do one more and back them up. And they've got a tough task ahead of them now because we know what DRX are capable of. We know that they're able to bounce back in these series. If T1 can go up to match point here, that'll be pivotal, of course, because then one game away from that title, one game away from Faker is Huron. It is that their mentality, their trust in their teammates are at supreme values after the journey that they have gone through this summer. Such an arduous path they have taken to this World Finals, always being underestimated. But when you go through that many upsets as DRX, your trust in your teammates just continues to build and solidify and strengthen your team play. First strike on Silas, not something you see all the time, but Zekka ready to go in and be aggressive, you would have to think, up against Faker here. Again, T1 not running any big tank on their squad, but the same can still be said for DRX. Both sides, again, betting on their own skill to find the angles, find the engages, and Maybe find the plays. Aatrox going through the draft just means you're always going to get carry matchups onto you. can't match it with a tank. You talked about it, Kobe. Level one. What will T1 do with it? They have the Graves buff spawning very soon. Looks like he's going to go towards his red, and there's no invade to be had. You saw DRX trying to mark any kind of aggression from T1 in the early stages, but owner won't have that camp advantage. Yeah, a couple interesting level one things as well is the Graves, since you don't need that sustain, can start with the control ward here. Owner actually holds on to his control ward, does not use it early. Zekka coming to uh, scout the Raptors and get the vision on that as well. The other thing is Barrel on bottom side with the sweeper uses it to clean out those side brush. If you look at the bottom side of the map, setting up those turrets on the sweeper activation for himself, very key for early lane phase. So I'm curious who gets the bot push here. It looks like DRX in the early stages are with the turrets, of course, but it's owner that's pathing down, and it's DRX's bot lane that wants to push, and wants to poke you on the tower, and wants to look for plates, but Pio6 actually pathing away from them. He can look to backtrack, but I think Death has the lowest jungle proximity of any AD carry in the entire tournament. Pio6 very rarely goes towards that bot side, whereas owner loves to be around Gumayushi. And we literally looked at the stat cards during our countdown phase. Pioshik has very, very low jungle proximity in general. So we want to see Deft and Barrel maintain autonomy and maintain control here in this bottom lane. Up here on the top side, it's Zeus being pushed in nice and early as Gumiyushi and Karia are fighting back in this 2v2. Zeka forced underneath the turret early on as the melee into ranged matchup. And there's the Hawk shot. This is such a problem to deal with as a jungler against an Ash pick. Yep, able to find him there with this snipe. As the expected route here, clearing up blue quadrant, does go right over to the Wolves, gives them the knowledge here uh, that Graves can work down uh, reverse clear as well. Baker, meanwhile, continually exchanging with Zekka, pushing in on this mid lane, setting up for Owner to go for it. So much experience, of course. T1's mid laner, Faker, and Zekka at his first World Championship. Such an explosive year for him, struggling on teams like BLG in the LPL. Now, looked like not to be the favorite at all in the LCK, but here he is, and he's having the tournament of his life. He just needs to get out of this lane phase. Faker will have the advantage in this part of the game. He's just about uh, kind of getting as many creeps as possible. And it's not like Zekka was a bad mid during regular season play, during domestic play. He was a top half mid laner. He was pretty high rated at any given point, but this tournament has just been an entirely different story. As Owner makes his way into the bottom lane, Feral and Def trying to get away. A lot of damage comes out. They will get the flash out of Def for the gank. Where is DRX's cross map? Piosik is up towards these Krugs. Zeus is still full HP. I don't think they can dive him with level four on Kingen. And this bot pressure is now in favor of T1, where both lanes want to push. Yeah, it was the exact same invades from both junglers. They both used their control wards behind the red buff oh, to go get enemy Krugs. But it's a higher value, way higher value there for Owner, burning the summoner spell off of Deft, getting that bottom lane into a, an opportunity for themselves. Yeah, perhaps Piosik thinks that they lose 3v3, so it's not really worth investing his time down there. He will do towards level 6, where these AD carries have so much setup on the enemy supports, right? Varus ult onto Lux, Ash ult onto Heimendinger. Your jungler can follow up so easy on that kind of skill shot, so we'll see what happens towards level 6 in bot lane. And, and the value of going with the bottom side there for Owner is so much higher because Dragon coming up, uh, for themselves with the extra summoner spell burned as well does give them the vision advantage as you see DRX on the support jungle recall timing here trying to retake. Yeah, both of our supports roaming around wanting to guarantee the ability to contest this neutral territory, contest the river, contest the vision as that Drake will be spawning in under 10 seconds. 
Def just trying to use piercing arrows to snipe out whatever we can here in the bottom lane. He knows his support isn't back yet. He knows he doesn't want to walk into anything that could give away this early game to T1. King doing pretty well right now. We'll look to TP back towards that top side. Camille will start winning even harder towards one item up against the Aatrox on side lane. We'll see how fights play out though. Dragon's still up, but bot lane to test. Bot lane pushes everything. Barrel losing half HP, gets ignited, but is not afraid. Fires off some rockets back into Caria. It's a one trade for T1, but they're just waiting for Pioshik on the side of DRX. He'll find himself on top of a control ward. Graves is also nearby, owner lurking in his own jungle. DRX knows that if T1 is trying to stand and fight, this is not probably a play they want to take, so they back Pioshik away. Yeah, important defense of that control ward there because T1 have Owner coming down and threatening in the fog of war. Pioshik has to give up. They can't take away that key vision. Level four on both sides. Crab spawning, but bot push for T1. Give me back from Faker will allow mid push and first response from the mid laner of T1 to allow Owner to get that crab. So small jungle advantage across to T1. And a little bit of optimization there from Owner. He waited for the dash up until Pioshik was right next to the wall, trying to get the Q1, Q2 damage instantly on the Diego to chunk him out. Still didn't end up working out for him, but now he's back into his own jungle, clearing out again. Bit of a slow early game, but the stun on Sagumiyushi connects. Cleanse is down. That opens up a window for Deft towards that level six, and they need to find that window. They need to break their way through bot lane. How many times have DRX made comebacks in situations where you counted them out? Can T1 stand strong? They've only lost two games this entire tournament. Will they fall or will they lose a game here to DRX in the finals? We will soon find out, but Gumiyushi trading a lot of damage on here onto both AD Crazy. carries. Guma's at about 200 HP, but Barrel has no mana left to work with. Yeah, Barrel keeps landing these grenades onto Guma, though. Got the cleanse out on the first one. Good chunk here as well. If he had a little bit more mana, maybe they push it harder. Ooh, close, but no cigar. The arrow does not find Gumiyushi. Deft is looking to stay around, push a little bit more. Wants to get one more wave taken care of before he gets his recall, I would assume. Barrel goes back, he purchases his control wards. He's gonna go back out onto the map, look to set down some vision, look to do a little bit of roaming as Deft finishes off the last little bit of this wave. Caria should be around to be able to freeze it and make sure that nothing goes too wrong. Yeah, he's gonna hold the wave there and force Deft to base a little bit further back, try to stop his recall. He's gonna pull it into the next wave so it stops crashing and then it allows uh, Gumuyushi to catch up and get a couple of these creeps that he might have missed. You can see that how the bot lane dynamic is playing out. Poke, Varus, Lethality build, Comet, Vamp Scepter for Gumuyushi to try to sustain. Faker, barrel's ready to go. The grenade finds the mark, but there's not enough damage. Faker deploying the gravity well on top of himself to stop it from going any further. Zekka finds a lot of damage into Faker. He's only got 200 HP left, and Zekka has ulti, but Faker is safe. Mid pushes everything, that's why Beryl's here, because Herald's about to spawn. You can see Piosik moving over towards it. Kingin's just taking a base to make sure he's ahead of Zeus in itemization. Death is ran towards bot, so he might see a 4 before around this top side, but DRX actually not going to start it up just yet. Yeah, super high value gank from Beryl here because of the fact that they already have used their teleports, allowing the push out, and Zekka on the Silas. Highest CS in the game. He's so good at these Silas, Anakali, melee, mid lane champions that have to trade their health early and focusing on CS. He does such a good job of getting that money early. Keep your eyes on the minimap though, because Kumayushi's around mid, Faker's come out of base, Deft is sprinting towards the top side, Zekka on the way as well. It's gonna be a 5v5 around this Herald. Zeus is grouping up with his team. Kingen's prioritizing top wave, the Herald resets. Level six on everybody except Barrel. That is a big factor here. He's not even close, and T1's got five men on the top side river. Owner did something interesting there. He used his regular smite on the Rift Herald to transform it into the 900 damage smite yeah. in case there's a smite fight, so he has the empowered one. All right, let's see it. DRX, ready to contest. Gravity well over the wall, gonna find death. Forced to cleanse, wants to get away, has to flash. Dell barely getting away from the snipe, but T1 controls the fight, controls the river, and controls the hero. Same story from game one. T1 are first the objective. DRX are forced to face check. Deft over steps. He's out of the fight. Five before DRX have to give it up. Oh, and there's so much long range threat with the Graves ultimate, with Victor ultimate. Ash arrow here from Guma. Now Deft, no summoner spells. Mid lane T1 pushing in the aftermath as well. Faker wants some money.
Zekka doing a good job sidestepping away from a lot of this damage that could be heading towards him. He'll farm up all of those minions. Maintains an incredible CS lead. Yep. Finds the E2 onto Faker. Q2's not gonna get the damage, but he's doing just fine. Meanwhile, Barrel up here in the top lane. Grenades and Rockets not gonna get a whole lot done just yet. Barrel still not level six. Kingen goes in, owner's the target, but now Zeus is locked down. Carry is here over the wall. It's first blood over to owner, oh, and I one are absolutely outplaying. Pioshik will not find the damage yet. He won't find the damage at all. Carry against it, and T1 goes three for nothing. Carry the sniper over the wall with the Lux ensures that Zeus stays upright in this. What a beautiful skirmish from T1. They bait them right in there, calling over Caria, lands the combo. You hit it right there, Kobe. Caria saves the day. Three kills to T1 in a play which DRX were looking for, sending Barrel up towards that top side, having Piosik hover around, look for Zeus, try to find that pick. T1 read them like a book again. Caria's there to respond. Zeka very low. Barrel gonna push Faker back so to allow his mid laner to take a base. Man, oh man, it is not the start that DRX wanted in game number two. Beautifully played from T1 in that top side skirmish, but the Herald is still in the inventory of owner. They can still use that any time in the next two minutes, but right now, their sights are on the Drake. This is something that we've talked so much about in the pre-show. T1's ability to outplay in these skirmishes and we've seen it in the semifinals, in the quarterfinals, them just dodging so many skill shots, setting up these even number scenarios and getting the huge advantage out of it. Another arrow lands into a full combo. It's just a big chunk, but yeah. it's while they're also getting the objective. And they have the Herald as well, so they can push in these bolt waves, force the RX. To oh push. my God, Carry, are you kidding me? He just sets it up like it's point and click. Karia says hello to his old lane partner. I'm sorry, Deft. I'm not going to be able to give you the Summoner's Cup. I want to win. All righty, let's see if Faker can get away from Pioshik and Zekka. Faker doesn't make it over the wall. He's in trouble, but he gets to safety. He flashes forward. It'll be a one for one, but Pioshik's in trouble. He uses the Heartbreaker to get away. Zekka getting back now as well. They'll trade Barrel for Faker. DRX will take that. T1 domination right now in these skirmishes. DRX try their best to fight back. Faker has to expend the flash, but he expends it aggressively rather than trying to flash away to make it a one for one. They don't get the Herald down, but it's both sides in their favor. Kingen fighting against Zeus. Zeus with the World Ender active, trying to chase Kingen back. However, the ulti is about to expire, so Zeus is going to back off there. If we can refocus on some hope for DRX, it comes back to one player. Never mind this one on one. It's so close. It's going all oh, the way. Kingen with the flash to get out of the way of the Q3. Barrel shows up, but he doesn't land it until the very end. Barrel, the rocket sniper, gets the kill. But now owner's ready to go. Buckshot in his back. There's no way home for the donger. Say good night. Owner picks up another. Time and time again, T1 respond to everything. DRX are throwing at them. They're going to trade one for one, and they're going to place the Herald down, funnel all this gold into Owner. Straight from draft, we talked about Owner being set up to be the one for success this game. And in game, he is going to be rich, 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 getting all the kills, getting the Rift Herald activation on top lane turret plates as well. And we talk about Death and Carrier, you know, 2020 DRX, one of the best bot lanes in the world. Everyone was celebrating them as the lane kingdom, and they thought that they could get a trophy together. But it was Owner and Zeus in 2020. While they were trying to chase the title, they were trying to win the Academy Series. And they, they did indeed, they won the Academy Series 2 0. Look so dominant, and that's when they got put onto this main roster. You fast forward now two years later, and Owner is just so strong on this Graves. Level 8, 3 0 and 2, has the Umbral Grave, and it all comes off the back of Kingen trying to find the 1v1. The flash away from the Q3 was great, but there wasn't as much follow up damage as he might have hoped for. As Beryl did arrive slightly late with the grenade, but he manages to pick him up with the missiles. Yeah, look at the mini map. Beryl gets here a little bit sooner, but Owner right on the way. Snipes him with the rockets here Darryl. after Kingen set it up, and it from downtown, Kuma Yushi hits the arrow, owner finishes the job. Yeah, the Ash was nowhere nearby. He's all the way back home in bottom lane. That one came from across the map to guarantee they get the kill back under the support. Kuma Yushi with the headshot there from across the map there is the hawk shots again just coming in constantly you talked about it Kobe about how the graves is oppressive and wants to get in the river and look for vision and the ash just 
facilitates that so well. So bot lanes towards mid here. Herald spawning in 30 seconds. Pick onto Faker. Yoshik gets Spectrum Maw. Kingen's ready to follow. Hextech ultimatum to stay out of the gravity well. Faker will buy a moment here with the Zonias. He dies. Kingen grabs the kill, but now he's got to get away. Seyus lands Q3 on two, but the damage ain't there. Seyus tries to get out, but Death is ready to go and shoots him through the heart. Zeka took away Gumushi's arrow there and shot it into Carrier to stop Carrier from being able to peel for the solo lanes of T1. Explosive fight in favor of DRX. They're going to chunk out this mid tower, but more importantly, they're going to get the Herald off the back of this play. One of the first neutral objectives DRX have picked up in this entire series. This is huge. This is the first step in the comeback for DRX. Rx, Zeka, the most fed member on the team, 162 CS with the kill, steals that ult you're talking about. That's two for DRX and the Herald. No more rift uh, or no more turret plates left on the map for them to cash in quickly, but it'll help with taking down one of those outer towers. It's not just what you get, it's what they don't get. You must slow the bleeding. You must be able to stop T1 from running away with it. And DRX are finding their signs of life. 40 seconds on the next dragon. Huge objective spawning up. T1 currently have a little bit of control around it. Kerry has placed the vision down, gone for a base, refresh those wards to make sure he's ready in case DRX tries to contest. Zeka still yet to base though. Faker has the TP. He can join that fight whenever he wants. Does DRX want to press the advantage and look for another fight around a neutral objective? We'll see this one again because it's the initial pick onto Faker, but it's Zeka. Look at his positioning. He's in bot lane. I think he has an Ash ult that'll come up and hit Kerry a little bit later on, but this stopwatch from Faker here was brilliant because it denies the Q2 from Kingen to allow the Chaos Storm to do damage. Arrow comes through from Zeka all the way from downtown. Stops Carrier from being able to peel to save Zeus. Boom. Boom. Nicely done. Nicely done. But now we find ourselves ready for another neutral objective fight. It is still almost a 2,000 gold lead for the side of T1. So DRX, they'll have to play smart. They'll have to find their moment, and they'll have to find a pick. Pioshik already going to start up the Drake down here. Nice CC on the barrel, but not enough follow-up to take him down. First turret's going to die up there in the top lane. It's Faker getting credit for that one. T1's not going to contest the Drake, so DRX will trade it for the first turret. Yeah, smartly cross-mapping there from T1. Faker saying he wants the, the, the top tier one, but I think DRX are going to herald here. Yes, they are, so Faker will move down. Zeus will move up. They're going to get a it's sandwiched here, DRX. Barrel's very low. The Herald won't kill the tower, so they need to get the next wave in. Gumiyushi has to use the cleanse. Nicely done. Gumiyushi getting himself back, but the shutdown on owner means that DRX now have a man advantage. The tier one turret still standing for now, but DRX wants to take it out. Minion wave's gonna collide. They're playing it safe. A little bit more damage into the turret is all they need, but they won't be able to find it. Barrel with a flash away. Zeus can't get the kill to follow. Lux Laser's gonna be sidestepped. Another kill over to DRX. This team is ready. They're doing it. They are making the comeback a reality. They're starting to believe. A tower down in mid lane. This opens up the map for them to get that vision back in their favor so they can actually set up their own plays for once. T1, of course, are still in the lead, 1,000 gold, but DRX back-to-back -back successful plays. Beryl is such a legend. I'm just going to say it right now. Three finals appearances. This grenade across the top to land onto Owner to get him the first kill. I think a Mikhail's came out from Carrier there on top of a cleanse. They were focusing so much on Gumuyushi. Keep your eyes on Beryl. This guy's 30% HP on high Heimring and just walking <laughs> up to T1. Baits them into him. Forces Zeus to flash to try to get the kill on the gap close, and then they turn it into another kill, another tower. Look how much confidence this player is playing with. Flashes out away from Zeus. Zeus tries to follow, can't catch him. Not he just the laser. The Lux laser walks away, and T1 can't get any money back. That was a beautiful CC chain from DRX. It was the grenade into the stun from Viego, into the extra stun as well. Burst him all the way down. King and jumps over. The gold lead has shrunk to less than half of what it used to be. DRX are finding moments, they're finding moves. Stopwatch available on Zekka's Silas here as well. Still the only member on the team without a death for DRX. Tier is also stacked halfway up for Deft here on that Varus. Has the Eclipse as the mythic item, so you know he's going to be spamming out some of those high damage arrows the further we go. DRX playing mid to top here. Zeus ready on the face check. He knows he doesn't want to go towards top side because the wave is in a great state. Arrow misses there from Gumushi. Tried to force the cleanse out of Death to make him so. He has a bit more pressure on this lane. Does Death want to ult him back? He's going to throw the Q. Doesn't have cleanse there, Gumushi, but Carrier 
first item Mikhail's to keep his AD carry yep. safe. And you're gonna have a side lane problem here for T1 because Camille's got a double stacked wave up at that outer tower. DRX are gonna take even more objectives right now. Pioshik cuts off Zeus, so Zeus can't go defend that tower. And look at the work Kingen is putting in. Great shift here from DRX. What you innately do is you push T1 back from mid lane to make them take a longer path to top. You take a shorter one so you can respond if they want to defend. Kingen doesn't have vision around the jungle support right now, but he knows that he's taken the objective. There's nothing left to be done. Zekka in isolation against Faker, who has a little bit of wave clear. He's gonna proc the crown. Yeah, that was a beautiful intercept. Here we go, though. Steals the ultimate. Zekka's ready to go. Ever Frost to lock Faker down. He walks away from the stolen Chaos Storm. Faker's at 40% health and no mana, so he has to fall back from this structure. Zekka has control over the bottom lane and may just be able to take another turret as Kingen backs up in the top side, respecting the fact that T1 recently had a lot of men up here. TP coming in from Faker. He just picked up Sonya as he has it for the dive. Can they pull it off? They're gonna miss the stun, but they find the second. There comes yeah. through Stasis. Cross map arrow. Faker has no ulti. Remember it. Faker's got no way out. And Sekka gets the kill. Welcome to the bottom lane. Teleport complete. And DRX welcome Faker with open arms. That means the other side of the map. T1 know they've got the numbers advantage. They take away the jungle. They try and push in, but no kill. Yeah, they can't pressure this tier two either. Kingen can just kind of sit in their face and clear out, away the wave. A lot of pressure in mid here from DRX means that they can collapse quite quickly. The bases are coming through to run to towards top. There's Barrel on your screen, yep. ready to help out the top laner of DRX. Bot tier one falls, and DRX have a gold lead against T1. It's been an entire year of best of threes where they have not had a game state this strong. <laughs> It's actually so crazy how many comebacks. If you come back from that inhibitor respawning game, you can come back from anything. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, I love Barrel. Doesn't even what know he's a there. Chad. The he just took Heimer the Dinger. blast cone, man. He didn't even care that that push was in the fog of war. The only ever time DRX had a game state like this was round two in summer 2022, where they had Sekka on things like Akali, similar to this in game two. But it was the GP from Zeus that stopped so much of the cross maps. DRX's macro was just too weak to go up against T1, but we've seen them take a top tier one from a shift to mid, take a bot tier one from a shift to mid, set up around these objectives, make sure they're first. The bounce back from game one is incredible. And I love exactly those, those little plays that they make to try and help out the macro when they're pushing top lane for Pioshik to go into the jungle and cut off uh, T1 as they're trying to rotate and answer the play, ensure they get the objective. Now they're up in Dragons as well, sacking this one with no counterplay from T1 because they've pushed out both side lanes. T1 needs to approach these fights by kiting back. Kingen's gonna jump in. Sekka and Piosik are gonna jump in, looking for a reset on the Viego. Death and Barrel are gonna play at range. So that means Zeus kinda needs to play frontline for T1 and try to help them burn through the divers of DRX's solo lanes. Ooh, Barrel eats a little damage there from the laser, but one of the big reasons I think DRX has swung the tempo of this game is after Caria found that ambush for the three kills in the top lane, DRX have been doing a much better job avoiding those bindings just like that. They're keeping enough distance that they can stay away from Caria's trap. And now we have to see Zekka, after all we've talked him up, after an amazing year at Worlds, an amazing tournament, can he actually carry the team fights versus Faker, the greatest of all time? He's the most fed member on DRX. He has the extra kills here on his signature Silas. Oop. <laughs> all right, I thought for sure that might have got there. I thought we might have got the 0.25 last seconds of the recall to interrupt it, but not quite, not quite. Every time the camera goes on to Barrel, he's being really cheeky, isn't he? He's just playing, <laughs> he's a very stubborn player. You know, I was speaking to Ashley Kang in terms of how he approaches communication with his team. Sometimes in draft, in Damwon, he'll just say to players like Nuguri, you're a good Fiora, just lock it in, don't be scared. Just, <laughs> just pull it off and we'll have a good game. So he just plays with so much confidence. Yeah, Zekka has said the same thing in his mid lane matchup when, when Barrel gave him the confidence saying, we are up, you know, your opponents are going to be scared. Play more aggressively. Exactly citing this player. These arrows haven't landed, have they? T1 to nope. get Death's cleanse, but Barrel in trouble now. Owner jumps in. Barrel's going to lose half HP, but without Guma Yushi's arrow, DRX knows they don't really have any way to catch up to him. 
Three minutes on the dragon. There's nothing to really fight for here for T1. They just wanted to get the crab. Piosing will face check Faker. will get chucked out a bit, but T1 needs to force this cleanse out of death so they can get some kind of mid push. While he has cleanse up, he has that defensive summoner to push them back. Piosing's doing the same thing. He's trying to cut off people going to answer the split push for themselves. They've got Zekka topside. Silas pushes the wave all the way to the tower. Faker has to go respond. And they get a little bit deeper vision here for DRX taking over behind the red buff. Thus is the nature of a tankless draft. Barrel with a flash away. He'll avoid any more follow-up. Gumiyushi still no arrow to try to lock them down further. Barrel drops the giant turret there as he makes his exit. DRX lose the flash on their support there from the attempted pick of T1. Still two minutes to go on the drain. Those are the timers T1 can play around. When Zeus can push out bot wave and move towards mid, DRX need to respect it. They didn't do it in this case. But Zeus will have to go back bot, catch the wave. Kingen has pressure on that side lane. Zeka has pressure on the side on the opposite side. Three pushing lanes for DRX. Allowing them to take away jungle resources. These lines of wards, they fought pretty heavily for Piosik to get this one behind red. Yep. Blue buff one stolen away as well. They're getting themselves step by step in the position to force T1 to those longer rotations that you're talking about. So they're always going to be a few seconds behind. It's all about time management and tempo in this game. Make sure you're always first. <laughs> Minus one get cannon, the cannon though. Get it there. And the next spike for DRX is this Rabbit on, on Zekka. When that Silas has three items and gets towards the level 16, that's when you'll see DRX really start to press their advantage, try to force around Baron. Their Baron uh, damage isn't great, but their turn is with champions like Camille and Silas. One minute on the next dragon, they can play towards that Ocean Soul point as well. And I want to go back to a little bit ago now, Kadrill, when you pointed out DRX finally taking the gold lead in the game. It hasn't been by much. They've been 100, 200 gold ahead. We are dead even. 26 minutes into this game, teams are getting strong enough, both of them, to be looking towards the Baron if they find an advantage. This is the point where everything rests on a knife's edge. It could go either way, depending on a hero play from anybody. And Kingen is here off to the side for DRX as T1 is grouped up in the mid lane. Carrier goes fishing again, but just not a whole lot to find. Remember, both AD carries have that cleanse. So looking for the picks on the other members. Ash Arrow on one side. Zekka not stealing an ultimate quite yet. Going back for his death cap right now. Yep. Ooh, he cancels the recall though. King and gave up a bot wave just to hover around for so long. You can see it's at the tower now. He has to run down and catch that. T1 were spamming question mark pings in their blue side jungle, wondering where the top laner was. The poke <laughs> is getting dangerous. Three item spikes are coming in slowly. 10 seconds on the dragon spawn. DRX are first. T1 grouping up towards mid. Zekka taking the base. Has the TP ready if his team needs him. Faker lost the crown of the Shattered Queen there from the arrow that came out from Deft. But the Rabadons is up for Zekka. Three item power spike is in. And recognizing that, I don't know if T1 will be willing to contest the Drake here. He, all, he also up. has critical level 16 on the Silas. Advantage over Faker, so T1 got to give that up. It's really hard for T1 to face check. You've got a Camille in Fog of War, a Varasult. Zekka can take away the Ash ult. You've got two such strong single target damage lockdowns that T1 can't afford to step up. They're going to face a DRX on Soul Point now. It's only going to get worse. They're going to be forced to face check in once again in five minutes' time. And we'll see if DRX move towards the Baron. Exactly. Five minutes is a long time in League of Legends. And that means for those next five minutes, Baron is the big thing. We expect to see both of the teams play around. Faker pushing out the top wave, likely going back to purchase his third item now as well, I would assume, as you're going to see recalls happening across the map here from both sides. Everybody regrouping. Stopwatches and control wards in inventories. We know the Baron dance is about to begin. Let the dance begin. All the talk of Death's last dance. Will it be a happy ending or will it be sad? DRX getting there first. Control wards already inside. Hawkshot's such a big advantage for T1, though, yeah. in being able to, to very, very safely keep their vision. King is grouping up. They're not actually playing side lanes right now, DRX. They're just all hovering around this barren pit. King is going to move towards bot now. Pings on the tier two. T1 have a window to find a fight. Whoa, 
Oh, Beryl the target of the enchanted crystal arrow, but he gets away. No flash as well. Beryl's just in their face. T1 now have to retreat backwards. Waves coming in. They have to catch top. They have to catch mid king and still in this fog of war. Not pushing bot. He really wants to fight. Here we go. DRX in the enemy jungle. Beryl's going to be found by Caria, but he does not step into the CC. Zekka now being chased, has to flash out. Faker flashes in. Zekka goes for the Kingslayer. He's trying to find any sort of a chance he could get, but he's 1v4, and he hits the floor. Shut down over to Zeus. Really good timing here for T1 to commit to the pick onto Zekka. It's still going to cost you an extra turret as DRX are able to shift over to mid lane, yep. but getting that kill, getting the flash as well out of Zekka, out of the Silas, can set themselves up for a big, big advantage looking at Baron. Faker will also have to play a lot safer on the victor though. Him without flash will have to keep distance. Base is coming in now, kill for Tower Trade like you highlighted. Dragon still 2 minutes 45 seconds away. That's always going to be plan B for DRX. Plan A is always going to be around this Baron trying to force fights. Level 16 on your solo laners like this means you do want to press the advantage. Stopwatches across the board. Yeah. One fight will blow this entire game open either way. Kingen wins this fight, but he's looking for the blue buff. Kingen, level 16 Arrow. compared to the level 15 of Zeus. Pretty big difference. Oh, beautifully buffered with the hook shot. Kingen gets out from what would have otherwise been a very precarious situation as Zeus now has to retreat and Kingen has backup. Yoshik will clear some of the vision out of this bottom side jungle. Barrel's hanging around nearby now too. Kingen keeping the push going here. Lux laser to thin the wave. Zeus wants to try to get rid of as many of these minions as he can. Kingen's gonna step up, trade with him here a little bit, hook shot right back to safe. The objective for DRX remains the same though. They want to continue with these same setups where they're able to push in on top and bottom first. That way, even if one of the side lane pushers gets picked off, like we saw Zekka last time, they still get an advantage, are able to trade a turret on the other side with the extra pressure that they mount. T1, take this little timing window though to hard shove mid, and here oh, comes the flank. Barrel going fine. for the bouncing grenade. He's not going to find nobody yet. Change of corruption, find Faker. But a nice use of the Mikaels gets him away. Owner's now your target. Kingen goes golden, getting himself out of aggro's way. Now you got Zeus here on the front Sekka. line. Sekka stealing away the Guma Yushio. He finds Zeus. Everfrost ain't going to hit the mark. T1 in retreat. DRX in chase. DRX heading back over to the Baron pit. Depth firing arrows to cover their retreat. Barrel in some danger. Has to flash the chain but they get the ulti out of Zeus. Summoner spells blown across the board. Still one minute on that dragon. Everyone needs to take a base, get their health bars back up, get as many items as possible, refresh wards, come back out on the map and contest these waves again. It's a dance around mid. DRX can't commit too hard into T1, and T1 really want to kite back. Yep, the biggest takeaway from that fight is that the next one, there will be blood, because splashes are getting very scarce. The only two remaining ones are on the T1 bottom lane. So these arrows that are coming from Gumuyushi, the flash bindings that are coming from Karia will be so much more likely to land, to find purchase in the next attempt. And just as big as summoner spells, Gumiyushi has purchased a stopwatch. Kingen used his in that fight, but has upgraded it into a guardian angel, and Pioshik still has his. Ten seconds until what will be the soul spawns for DRX as Karia gets chunked. My eyes are on that Mikhail's cooldown. See if it comes up for Karia in time. Did Kingen take away that crap? No, he didn't. Zeus, Zeus got it. So the, the, the Mikhail's needs to come up so the T1 can face check. They need to use it on the Varus ultimate of death. Pyosix off to the side. Kingen looking for an angle. Finds himself on a control war. T1 need to stay as a death ball. DRX really want to sandwich them and squeeze the carries backwards so they can kill the front line. Pyosix walks out using the mist to cover his retreat. Zekka's here on the flank. Kingen even further behind. Oh. Again, beautifully buffered with the hook shot. He's so good. Really quick reaction times there. And now no Ash Arrow for the pick for T1. They still have the flash advantage, though. Yeah. Dragon's already going to be started. T1 have the aggro, but Kingen is again on the flank. Gumayushi's at two-thirds HP. Drake is going to be secured, but Kingen's coming in. Kari and Zeus go over the wall. Gumayushi is caught, but he goes into the stopwatch only for a moment. Shut down back over to Zekka. Owner's oh. his target. E2 strikes true, and Owner is trapped. Or is he? Now he's finally going to be killed. Double kill back over to Silas. T1 gets one back, but they're still retreating. Zekka, flash in. 
Deca looking for the triple. Five time with Zonius. King gets ready to back him up. Faker goes over the wall. Zeus tries to fight, but the damage pours in. Deca grabs a third as they're now going to find Faker here in the bottom lane. King and Death do the work, and that's money in Death's pocket. And DRX will cut them all down. That is five members of T1 in the dirt. DRX turn towards the Baron. They are making the push. And it all comes off the back of Zeka. This kid is the real deal. You give him these playmakers, he will make magic happen from having a strong lane phase up against the greatest player of all time to being the driving force in that team fight to get them this Baron. No arrow steal, no chance, no shot. It is DRX with a 35 minute Baron. Zeka has faced every challenge in front of him standing up. The only last question was going to be Faker, and he stands tall again. Take a look at it. They gave up the dragon. They were looking for the collapse the entire time. All eyes on Gumayushi to get that AD carry out of the fight first. And then they know they can go for the chase. With Silas and Camille, some of the longest range chase for solo laners you can have in the game. Zeka as well as Kingen finding the collapse. And that's it, it's Zeka and Kingen, the driving force, Beryl right behind them. Piosix just fishing for resets. Deft missed his ult, missed a couple Qs, didn't get as much impact as he would want. Zeka didn't go for the Q there on Carrier. Maybe could have picked up the trip of triple, but T1 just don't have the damage for this Silas. He's just running straight through all of them, picking up all the kills, and eventually Faker falls to Deft and Kingen. Faker without enough mana to try to fight back in this 1v2 as Karia runs himself into the turret. An execution is all he can hope for. And DRX finally found the fight they were looking for. They command a Baron and a 3,000 gold lead, and they're pushing into the T1 base. Oh, hold me close, boys. This is what we wanted from this series. DRX poised to strike back against T1. They're at the gates. They're knocking on the door. Sekka has stolen the Ash ultimate. Keep your eyes on either side for a long range pick. Zeus clearing mid wave. Death staying towards top. Arrow misses King and again. He buffered the E every single time. Gumayushi's fishing for these arrows. DRX are dodging and diving away. It's a 1 4 right now. King and's pushing mid. Four man top for DRX. Barrel is the bridge between them. Fakers on the side. T1 looks like they want to fight, but without the Ash ult, it's incredibly hard. When does Zeka pull the trigger? Exactly. Keep your eyes on the Silas. Mid lane continuing to be chunked down here by the minions. Kingen getting chased after by Faker. Kingen could be in some trouble. Owner's ready to follow it up. Flash out. Faker gets the kill, and T1 holds the lob. That's got to put a stop to the siege right there. That pick alone, T1, have dealt with this critical timing window. While DRX are wearing Baron for another 50 seconds, they take down King and they relieve the pressure. Big mistake there from King and he tried to E off the wall to land onto Faker, but he wasn't in range. Doesn't commit the ult because he realizes Faker has so much damage and the arrow missed from Zeka. Tries to run away, the flash didn't get as much distance away as he might would want, but here's where he eased the wall and looks for the fight. Arrow misses as well, Faker doesn't get stunned. And then King realizes he's made a mistake, has to run back around the tower in case he'll get stunned. Flash doesn't really avoid anything apart from the Lux ult, and he dies. Yep, this is what makes the difference. The moments on the biggest stage in the world with all of the pressure. DRX still can recover though, no problem for them. They've got the gold lead, they also still have Dragon Soul Point. Dragon arriving in 50 seconds. Exactly, and that afforded them a good fight last time. Death of the Clans, Death of the Flash, that is both summoner spells of the DRX Marksman. That is huge for T1 in this upcoming battle. No ultimate as well. He should be in time for the Dragon Spawn. T1 will get the mid tower though, and they will keep on going. The solo lanes are here to respond. Piosik is lying in wait, waiting for this Dragon to spawn, waiting for T1 to move into this bot side river. T1 should know that he's around there with the mist and the wards being down, so they'll stay as a death ball, stay grouped up. Death will rejoin Zeka. Zeka walking right into a brush. Everfrost on three. Honestly, Graves' collateral damage barely tickled him. That's half HP on the DRX mid laner. Yeah, T1 are fishing for big chunks on health that would allow them a better setup on Dragons. This could be a teleport back from Zeka, though. Level 18 on the Silas Carrier goes. Oh, oh, flash binding. If they grab Pioshik, they guarantee the Drake. Pioshik with the flash back over the wall. He has Guardian Angel, too. Oh my God. Shane, CC, 
Theoshik goes into the GA. He's just the buying dragon, time. The, dragon. the dragon's already up. T1 trying to chase, but We're are they going to lose out on the Drake? The dragon's still being burned. DRX are going oh, for it. It's stolen away by Ona, and Sekka has to flash him the wall to live. Kingan stuck in the pit, tries to jump out, pulled right back in by the Infernal Chains. He'll resurrect as well. That is two Guardian Angels wasted on the side of DRX. Karyo finds the enemy jungler. He sniffs out Kyoshik, flashes on him, forces him away from the, from the dragon. They kill the jungler. That allows Owner to flash in on the graves and steal away the dragon. So oh my goodness, it was at their fingertips. Karyo just does not miss, does he? With the Insane. Everfrost, with the Qs, he knew how much time he had to help Kumayushi gap close. We'll see it again. So. Pops the E to get a little bit of vision onto Piosik. Then he just instantly Q flashes him the second he sees him. It gets better though, because as Piosik also of the wall, watch this Everfrost, lands the tip of it onto him as well to allow Gumayushi to get damage down. Jungler falls, T1 are in time to take away the Dragon. These last 10 minutes have been immaculate. Then Owner knows, I've got to get to Dragon. They're burning down Dragon, so we see Owner rushing for it. Zekka tries to delay him. Zekka stunned him up there on the ramp. He ults backwards, flashes forward, and gets there oh. in time. Split seconds determine that soul, and Kingen gets pulled back across just to rub salt into the wound. They lose another member. They lose another Guardian Angel. T1 are relentless. Oh my goodness, such a close one. So well fought here as well in the setup and we see the reactions. Joy on one side, concern on the other as DRX have had this game going their way for a while, but now T1 have swung it back. I think that's an incredibly accurate way to put it because T1, they've got so much pressure on their shoulders to deliver. You know, trying to reestablish the dynasty here, coming in as the favorites. No overreactions for one fight. We'll see if DRX are unfazed, unfazed by the last 10 minutes. See if they can still pull this through. It's a very even game state now. Gold within 5, 600. Dragons even a piece. T1 have found a way to stabilize the game, and they're becoming incredibly strong. DRX haven't been able to force their advantage as much as they might like. And now it's a barren dance as it sports. Ocean Rift puts so much extra brush on the map, and DRX have to be so careful when they check these brushes. It was the brush check from Zekka that put him such low HP that he had to teleport back into the fight there for the last Drake. DRX now going to find a ward here in the Baron Pit that can't start anything up cheekily or sneakily. Four full items plus boots completed on Zekka, working on that final item. Faker himself, full build, late game victor. DRX have really struggled in these last few fights, but they've faced way worse heartbreak in their series against EDG. So, Death's coming out of base, has the Serpent's Fang, six item Lethality, Poke Varus is ready. Summoner's coming up for Keria. Gumiushi still doesn't have the flash, neither does Owner. He had to use it to get the Dragon. Does T1 start it up? They have pretty good vision to do so. Zeus has the TP, but they have a free bot tower as Kingen decides to group DRX as five, trying to get this next mid wave in. Yeah, number one priority there for T1. They were trying to find out all these wards so they can't get flanked again. The flanking power of the Camille, of the Silas, has been devastating. It's trying to clear all of these brush and control the side lane push first. Let's make sure it doesn't happen again. Kingen gonna find Faker, but they're also gonna find Barrel. Kingen wants to get away. Barrel nearly dead, had to flash to save his own life as T1 have a nice health advantage now. And you'll see Owner, Karia, and Gumayushi heading back towards that top side river, heading back towards that Baron. Death gonna do as much damage as he can, poking with these piercing arrows. T1 continues to stay together as Kingen tries to cut the wave, trying to make some space, distract T1. The Drake spawning in one minute, the Baron still up as they fight for mid lane control. Faker's victor is a really big problem for DRX right now. He scaled to the point of four items with a crown, with the Rabadons, and it just means that with this full build victor, how do they get on top of him? They have to proc the crown initially, the ultimate comes out, Beryl instantly has to flash away. Kingen has a little bit of magic resist coming in, but this full item victor is doing so much work to allow T1 to push forwards. At least DRX have been able to buy time for their Guardian Angels. They just had Kyoshik's uh, cooldown come back up on it and very short on Kingen. 30 seconds on Dragon. T1 first to the river. Kingen in a position to look for a flank. 
Death needs to arrive. He's trying to clear out the mid wave. Luxult from Zeka pokes out Owner, but King and trying to sandwich T1 here, who want to stay grouped the up, blank. who want to look for this dragon. The poke wasn't a ton. The fruits are going to heal it off as Owner grabs all of those, and the Drake is ready to go. T1 has stopped this so long enough that now it's guaranteed for either side. Whoever takes it, takes it, and we're done with these Ocean Drakes. T1, they're going to start it up. They've got the aggro. They're going to burn through it a little bit, but they're taking their time. Kingan's coming around from the side. Carrier trying to keep him away. Death with the piercing oh, arrow. Baker. Baker goes in for the flash and gain, and the dragon's been taken by owner. T1 ready for the chase as Zekka and Barrel run for their lives. Zekka's going to be isolated. Zekka's going to be caught. Is Zekka going to be killed? He uses stasis to dodge the arrow. He may be able to use the Kingmaker to get away, but no, it's Zekka traded for Carrier a one for one. Now a TP coming back into the mid lane. T1 with a solid advantage here. Death's gonna look for some poke, finds it on owner. They're so good at using these timing windows. T1, they focus everybody on pushing the RX off of the dragon, allowing owner to get it. Pioshik is sticking around for the Baron transition here, but Karia also sacrificed his life to keep Kingen out of the fight. It's a 4v4 and they started up Baron. Baron's gonna burn fast. T1 got it at half HP. Barrel also at half HP. Pioshik and Death ready to fight. Chains of Corruption fly out. They're gonna find three different targets. Faker is low. Faker is down. Zeus tries to fight. Owner into the back line. Gonna pick one back up. Death gets Guardian Angel out of Gumiyushi as Pioshik is ready to fight. Sword versus gun. And Owner has to run away. Death has one shot to kill the king, and he doesn't miss. Faker falls, Gumiyushi and Zeus as well. Sekka's TPing in, and he has the TP as he spawns. Do they go towards Baron, or do they look to end the game? It's only carry an owner for 40 seconds. They gotta focus on the minion waves. They can't do it. They don't need to focus the minions if they're gonna be able to focus the enemy. Team, carry a drop as owner is now the target. DRX, a couple minions at their back. They can't go. go. Kingan wants owner, but he ain't gonna find him. The push continues. Inhibitor falls. Over. DRX want to make it happen. Owner trying to flash Stay. in, trying to do it, trying to save it. Don't but no, DRX rise to the occasion, and they will tie this series. They lose the soul, but they win the game. DRX clutch it out. Oh, my God. That game was clawed back by T1. They had a soul, and they went for a Baron, but it's death who shoots the arrow onto Faker, gets the initial kill. Once the victor is down, the rest of the RX can clean up. And with that one single window in the last 25 minutes of the game, the RX end the game. What a win. What a win that started off looking a lot like game number one. What team play coming out from DRX to keep themselves going blow for blow in what is now the longest game of the tournament so far. That beat out game five of Gen G versus Dom One. My God. It was a mid-game drought for DRX. They couldn't get as many kills as they wanted. They got some towers. They lost two or three dragons in a row. Heroics were Ooh. necessary in this game and they were delivered. I'm sweating, boys. That was, uh, that was a game. I hope we get three more of those. Ten years in the making, this finals. It, it really is. And if the RX lost that game, it would have been such a heartbreak, being in the driver's seat. Their first win against T1 all year. They had it in their hands, and they almost dropped it. But they've stood tall. 1-1. Remember.